Yo, hi. Yo, hi, hi. This is Boyder, and this is the Do You Podcast. Today, we are going to work with an experimental format focusing solely on the creative process, all right? It is something that is different for everyone. I'm fascinated about how people go about making things, whether it's a drawing, a new business, a cupcake, a football play, or in the case of our interview today, music. There's always setbacks, fears, and resistance that comes with this process. And there's truly something remarkable about bringing something into the world that is unique to you and that others can find value in. And in some cases, you know, the world's not going to see it. In other cases, millions of people see it. But regardless, you usually find some growth through the experience to, to make yourself better as an individual moving forward. And learning about other people's process can help us along in our journey in making things. So today, I have singer, songwriter, producer, coffee table maker, teacher, neat freak, and my friend, Luke O'Brien on the podcast to chat about his process and his approach to making stuff. Let's boogie. Everybody getting lost all in it. It goes round and round. Everybody's so crazy now. Today I'm sitting down with Luke O'Brien, formerly Lukey the Bird. He was one half of Ha Ha Yo. He is one half of Ha Ha Yo. Ha Ha Yo never dies. Lives ever. On. Because I know from working with him, the constant enthusiasm, the constant courage, the constant, constant love for life and the moment and whatever he's dumping his energy into is inspiring to me. So if it's inspiring to me, it can be inspiring to other people. So with that being said, let's get into this dang interview. Luki, introduce yourself. Uh, as Tom said, my name is Luke O'Brien. I uh, am a creator of a lot of things. I just enjoy creating. Um, Enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How do you want people to remember you? Uh, I just want people to say, he was a great guy. Who is your most recent inspiration? Um, very into J. Cole and John Bellion. Who was your first inspiration? Talib Kweli. What inspires you? Um, people. What discourages you? People. <laughs> <laughs> How do you stay motivated? Um, I don't. I'm not always motivated. So um, <clears throat> I have to constantly re-motivate. What's your biggest challenge? Remotivating myself. <laughs> uh. If you had to start over, what would you do differently? Um, I don't want to be too bland here, but I don't think I would do anything differently because I like where I'm at. And uh, now there's times where I think back and I think like, oh, what if I was in a band? You know, I was in a band called A Cool Stick. What if we stuck together and I saw that through? And I and I dwell on those things sometimes, but then I have to tell myself. You only have the now, and you only have your future, so plan for both. <laughs> it seems to work out. How do you keep it real in your work? Because you do. How do you do I that? I do. I keep it super duper, super duper real, and uh, <laughs> I just I, I just write what I know. I've heard that before. A lot of people say, like, if you're going to be a writer, write what you know, and I think that that's, it just makes things easy. What do you know? I know myself, and I know my perspective Boom. on the world. Uh -huh. yeah. If you were the president, what is the first thing you would do? It doesn't have to be anything with politics. What is the first thing you would do? I would raise the salary of uh, uh, staff at all education facilities. Bang. Describe your favorite color without saying the color. <laughs> it's somewhere between black and white. Starts with a G, ends with a ray. Interesting. Do you pay attention to people's reactions of your creativity? Um, if they're positive, yes. If they're negative, no. <laughs> You've never paid attention to Oh, no, that's reaction. not true. You're right. I, I have, for sure. And, and, and how would you get over that? Like, it makes your blood boil a little bit. And the first, a little boily. <laughs> a little boily. And then like, the first time it happens, you, you just like respond because you haven't been through it. And you're like... I'm going to put this person in their place, but that will never happen on like an online comment forum. So I've learned over the years to just turn a blind eye. You know, I, I saw a meme the other day. It said, uh, 
like this this guy and his wife were in bed and he was like still awake and he was like honey i don't think i can go to sleep someone on the internet is wrong right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. like, and that was uh, me for a good like three to five yeah, years yeah, yeah. all right <laughs> um top three attributes to your ideal kind of person to create with um willingness um uh, courage and uh, a sense of humor where do you write your songs um do a lot of writing in the car but i'm very like spatially influenced so like i'm constantly moving my recording setup and my writing setup and if I'm feeling writer's block, I'll move to a new space or I'll go outside. So I, I, I write like all over the place. What's your favorite attribute of yourself? Attribute? <laughs> attribute. Well, I, uh, I, I attribute this his, attribute His to vocabulary. You. <laughs> uh, my favorite attribute is um, my jubilance. <laughs> your jubilance. What's your least favorite? Ooh, um, this one's get tricky. I think I know what it is, though. I think it's my naivety. Ooh. Or my naivete, <laughs> um, because sometimes I get overly jubilant when people are like, oh, I could do this for you, and it'll be cool. And then I'm like, all right, sounds good, and then they take advantage of me. Tell me about the special thing you used to do in college when you were giving tours of your your, your college campus as a living. I was a, uh, a campus tour guide at Loyola College. It was college up until 2009, last graduating class at Loyola College. It's now University Hounds. Go Hounds, go Hounds. Woo, woo. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, I was a tour guide, and at the end of the tours, and I became known for this, so people would say, are you the tour guide that raps? Because we've heard of you. I said, indeed I am. G uh, give me an example of what that rap sounded like. Uh, it'd be like, yo, I was born up a PA, sing like VJ, spin like a DJ, rap kind of cliche, and so on. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Word. Um, one song you want people to hear to introduce who Lukey the Bird is that you've made. Mm-hmm. Not um, this, not like Drake made or like Tupac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the best, I, the, the most the, representative, the most representative Tupac song of yours. I'm just kidding. No, the Luke that would the be Bird Dear song. Mom. Um, <laughs> that would be Hit 'Em Up. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it changes. It might be changes. Yeah, it can. Um, the most representative of my own work, I think, is Don't Be Afraid. That's the first one that comes out. Because for mm -hmm. me, I feel like life and, and like, the creative realm of my life, but also just life in general, has been a series of like getting over your fears. Like, um, and, and that whole song is, is just about that. Do you have a video coming out for that? I do have a video coming out for that. It's funny you ask. Who shot that? Uh, the insanely talented salt of the earth man known as Mikey Van Buren. Mikey Van Buren. Gosh bless. Gosh bless. Gosh bless. Gosh bless. I love he Mikey. Is he, we, we've worked with him on multiple yes, uh, video occasions, like an idiot. and it, the the salt that he brings from the, his earth mm -hmm. is some it's, of the most genuine, inspiring um It's pink energy. Himalayan sea salt. It's pink Him Himalayan. But tell me about but that he, video. He You're shot, excited about that. I'm very excited about it. He shot Don't Be Afraid. Um, we had a concept where we have this young child, and he's uh, looking to get over a fear, being jumping off of a high dive. He has an imaginary friend in the video, or is it imaginary? Oh, Up to the viewer. What's and his name? <clears throat> um, <laughs> I think we called him. Uh, we did have a name for him. Might have been Adam. It's Mil Milinkovic. It was either Adam <laughs> or Milinkovic. <laughs> it's it's in the behind the scenes. Um, okay. And um, and that'll be out too. But it's gonna come out on March nineteenth, and it's 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 fire. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Written and produced by you. Written and produced by me, yes. And shot by Mikey Van Buren. Shot by Mikey Van Buren. And then um, the uh, we're having a video release party in Westchester, Pennsylvania on March 19th. So if you're around, you should come to that at Sprout Music Collective. Be there. More cues. Um, tell me about a challenge that came with making of that video. A challenge that came with making yeah. that was to... Go ahead. Go ahead. There were two. One was we were working with a five-year-old kid yes. as our main character. The challenge was quickly nixed because this kid, Dominic, was a badass. And he's smashed in. And then the other challenge was that it was like 95 degrees every day. And I was in like a rubber mask and a large suit. 
dressed yeah. as a monster. Yeah, but you you it's you are challenges like that. It, like you welcome them. Uh, I remember we were walking up the street right out here, and we were shooting the "What Would Diddy Do" video. We had our 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 sweatsuits on, our red and blue sweatsuits on. We had our chucks, and we were shooting dancing scenes on, on the street because we, you know, what would Diddy do? He'd while out on the street, and we're walking up, and and da- and Danny Danny Corey who shot that video was like, yeah, I think we need to get one more shot. Maybe you guys dance up the traffic, and like Danny's like. So we're kind of going back and forth. I don't want to dance up traffic at all. I'm like, my family lives in this town. They're going to see me dancing through. Their friends are going to see me dancing through this traffic. And then Danny's like, we might as well go hog wild. And I really didn't want to do it. And do it. That was verbatim. Yeah, he, yeah, he said, goes, he goes, wild. we might as well go hog wild. We got this far. We got the video rentals. Luke looks at me and goes, Boyder, we're going hog wild. So. I went hog wild. We, we danced through the video. Wild. It might be the best part of that video. Of any video ever. So you can see that <laughs> we're li- we're literally dancing up traffic. We we dance up the traffic and then and then as soon as there would be a, a green light, we'd run to the side of the road and then run back up to the front and then do it again. Yeah. And then do it again. It and we did blast. it about ten takes and and I'm very thankful for for your um ability to to bring out the most in people ah. around you including myself thank you it's it's synergetic especially when you and i are in the room you've brought the best out of me at times yeah thanks um <laughs> <laughs> <Time out>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna make a joke earlier i noticed you have the the focus set up so it just goes on your oh face. no it's is automatic that, is that it, just a, it's it, it knows where my was chin it is. automatic tom i got the long chin like if there's three people it just yeah, yeah it, it, <laughs> I like, it's like a fingerprint like i take a picture of my face and i say right. when this face is in the room find that face it's not working now because it's on mine but but, um, but you know the joke yeah. you get it all right we're gonna keep this banging <laughs> um <clears throat> has rejection ever affected your creative process it's made me more driven. Uh, explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, t- truth though. Like when when you knock on a door and somebody just either doesn't answer or tells you that you're not good enough, it's like, all right, well. It it definitely like instills something in you where you're like, in three years, I want them to be knocking at my door. Yes. Um, so yeah, I I try to turn those things into like which very well energy. has has probably had happened already and will continue to happen tons of times it's it happened today (laughs) um would you rather tour as the lead act for a living and make 50 grand a year or become a writer for other artists behind the scenes making one million a year but people will never know who you are in that case right the id versus the ego, essentially. The id. Um, well, not necessarily. not necessarily. Like, I would rather tour and make fifty thousand dollars because uh, that's like I feel like would be the most fulfilling for me. I love performing. You like feeling the the visceral response immediately in person. People jumping up and down, enjoying the the art. Absolutely. As well. And I feel like I write best when I'm writing like something that I know is going to be channeled through me, like what I'm saying. That rather than writing for someone that I don't necessarily know. I'm going to give you a challenge. Make a hook out of two objects in this room right now. A wrap hook. Alright, well let's pick these items. Do You want you pick one and I pick one. Alright, cool. Um, <clears throat> I, the first one that I thought of was this Argentinian uh, <clears throat> mini football. Argentinian football. I, I, I saw that too. It's actually a soccer ball, but Football. 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 Right. I, I kind of. Mr. Vocabulary. And. Um, Argentinian football. <laughs> and coffee Dribble mug. Right on down the line. Argentinian football. Got me feeling so fine. It's like the caffeine that I find inside my. Coffee mug when I rise and grind. I gotta get on the field, play some Argentinian <laughs> foot, foot, foot football. Make sure it's miniature. Something I don't know, like cool, cool. Like no, a sound, like it. a like a I love from it. the perspective of a football player. I love it. I football love it. Player. I love it. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Um. <clears throat> 
it's all been, well, my dad, my dad gives great advice. And one day I was like stressing out just about where I was in life. I was like, man, I'm 28 years old and like, I don't have <laughs> anything to like stand on <laughs> like, yeah. monetarily. I want to <laughs> establish myself. And I my got dad, a babe. I got stuff. Yeah. I got, I got, I got, pro- I got things I need to take I care of. provide like yeah. in a, in a, in a in a legitimate way, and he was like, listen, take the pressure off your back. Which, not, not in a way of like, don't be, don't be driven, don't be motivated, but don't think so much about what's gonna happen. Yeah. And that's that actually, another piece of his advice is don't focus on the outcome, focus on the process. And I think once you start doing that, then you just get lost in what you're actually doing. I, I'm 100% with you, yeah. and, and I'm sitting here this right here, this concept within the Do You podcast, I think I'm going to call it the process. The process. How do you feel about that? I, I love Calling it. Calling it the process. So Just, whether it's an entrepreneur, artist. Yeah, I mean, I know my dad has a copy written, so just look into like <laughs> what that would cost you. <laughs> What's the name of the most recent song you've made? Not, not, not on the uh, current album. What's like the most recent track you've laid down? The most recent track I've laid down is a song called Yesterday I Was 22. Give me a bar. Um, well, I'm going to sing you like part of the hook. Oh, yes. It goes, 28 is a funny age. Time don't wait, but the money do. Mm-hmm. Reminisce on a sunny day. Oh. Yeah. Everything right in front of you. I turn a page and another page. Go. Still so much that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Life moves in a funny way. Because yesterday I was 22. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, yesterday I was 22. And then it kind of, yo, <laughs> we going to get that Fire, Taylor right? Swift feature <laughs> in yeah. two years because yeah. she'll be 28. Yeah. Oh, my man, I like that. Isn't that nice? That's a smooth song. What inspired and then, that? And then there's, uh, it's just that feeling like, like I said, I'm 28 and I feel it's just time, time moves so fast and you turn around and you're like, man, it feels like just yesterday I was 22 and. Um, that's basically it. <laughs> and, and where were you when you thought of those lyrics? Um, like, wh- were you eating something? Were you riding your bike? I was actually, I just dropped my car off at a Sunoco to get an oil change. Mm-hmm. And I was walking back home and it was kind of brisk out. And I was just, just coming up with a melody and then just thinking about my life and things like that. And it came to me. Um, <clears throat> and then how long, okay, go ahead. Something cool about the song. There's you know, that hook, and then there's three verses, and they're each 12 bars. In the first verse, the the first line has the number one in it. The second line has, or not the number, because sometimes I, I twist them to be words. Like, I use the number two as saying, like, T-O-O, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. T-O. Of course. And then the third line has three, and then four, which I also use as, like, F-O-R and five, six, seven. The second verse does the same thing, and the third verse does the same thing, and the last the last line has the number 28 in it. So it's, like, one through 28 for the for the for the verses yeah that's fire yeah that's fire that's smart yeah you're, you're that's that's my favorite kind of writing when there's like, like a little trick when there's something that <clears throat> you might be listening to it five years down the line and just get it mm-hmm. just understand what right. that happens with me and jay-z a lot yeah me too. you know things i remember like you know eight at 18 when i was listening to his songs i I was just like all surface, like oh, this sounds cool. But then I'll, I'll revert back to them, you know, trying to you know school someone around me on, on yeah. how good a certain song was. I'm like, wait, I didn't even, I didn't even realize he meant that. <laughs> he does that. Uh, I, same thing happens for me and my, my buddy Mike Leupold and I always used to just like sift through his lyrics and pick them apart and try to find stuff. And I never, I never saw the line. Um, it gets TDS. I keep so I keep one eye open like CBS. CBS. I, I just, I don't know. It just went over my head for some reason now that i know it it doesn't seem wait like that. wait what part of it didn't you the like the just the logo of cbs uh, and how it's uh, an uh, eye. okay yeah and yeah. my buddy mike was like dude 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 look at this it gets tds yeah so yeah, i yeah. keep one eye open like uh, cbs you yeah, see yeah. me stressed right oh uh, yo what was there was a certain <laughs> song that used to give me ch- i don't know why it used to give me or a certain bar in that song used to give me chills growing up it was like we, uh how did that go um, can i live uh we at the bar getting or laughing, laugh. Uh, how'd it go? Uh, with laughing while I'm watching every watching me closely. My, my shit is butter for the bread. They wanna toast me. I keep my head both of them where they supposed to be. And get your side track and clap and clap from closed feet. 
I don't sleep. I'm tired. I feel wild like codeine. These days, a brother got to admire me from four fiends away. My pain wish it was quick to see. I'm oh, yeah. selling cane till brains yeah. was fried to a fricassee. What's a fricassee? I don't know. I don't know. That's see? Some... There's this perfect... Can't lie. At the time, it never bothered me. At the bar, getting my thug on properly. My, my squad and me, lack of respect for authority. Laughing hard, happy, happy to be escaping poverty. That was that yeah, was that's fire. That was the line that like got triumph. me. I don't know why. Cause it's just like happy, <clears throat> laughing hard. Like you, you don't hear rappers talk about like their laughter and their their happiness. Right. Like he was like, like we're you can just picture him and his boys like feeling like we're beating poverty a little bit. And you know that cackle, that laugh. Like somebody <laughs> cracked a joke, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that laugh was like even harder than it like had to be, just because it was like. There was like a little dose of just joy and just, just <laughs> like of just like liberation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. That was a that was a that was a, a solid song. So wait, so you have the idea. You're leaving Sunoco. <clears throat> do you get home and do you write it right then, or do you like voice note it and then voice note it, write the lyrics down, and then um, where do you write them? I want to know the whole process. I write the lyrics in. I just have a. Uh, like a, a notepad. Okay. Um, but it's a really cool one. It says like Mon Chien Blanc or something. Yeah. It's like this like French just makes me feel Do artistic. Do cooler notepads make your lyrics cooler? 100%. Okay, cool. Uh, and, then, yeah. and, then and then and then where and then what? Um, so then I will <clears throat> usually my songs start with uh, you know, I'll have that idea, I'll have a melody in my head and I'll send a voice note to uh, my friend Jimmy Morganti, mm -hmm. the guitar player. He's as we said earlier, he's willing, he's courageous, and he's he's ready to go. He's at the drop always of the ready dime. to He'll, go. He will quit a job if <laughs> and, and, and and if the concept is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will stop what he's doing when the, if the concept's right. He will, and he so he'll come over. I'll sing him it. He'll come up with the chord progression. I lay those vocals. I program some drums. What I've been doing recently is sending sending that project to this kid named Butch Seriani, or he goes by Odd Kid Out on on a here. Yeah, we don't need that. Oh, why did I do that? I don't know. It just stopped. Oh, cool. Thanks. So I'll, I'll send <laughs> that to Odd Kid out, and he does drums. He's just a filthy drummer, and he's great on the MPC. So you and got a little production squad. A little going production on. squad. Yeah, Jimmy on guitars, Butch on the on the MPC and the drums, and then um, Jonathan Coleman on the bass. He'll come over and do like bass, and then also like effects. He has a pedal board with a bunch of pedals, and he's just like. An insane musician, but also just an insanely awesome person. Like his his positive energy and his, so, it, I I thought I had a good vocab, and his vocab is is just um, yeah. I can't think of a word for it. He would have one. <laughs> he would have one. <laughs> we'll we'll find a word from him, and I'll put that in the show notes for yeah. you guys to tell us, so so you can see how big his vocabulary <laughs> is. So yeah, you bring them together. Do you produce some like a shell of a beat before you get them in the room? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 um, well, sometimes, sometimes I'll just start with pianos and I'll play the pianos, but I like, I really like the guitar. So I'll, I'll start with those a lot. And then I do, I do like placeholder drums, which sometimes end up just being the drums on the track because I, I am, I've got some skills, um, in terms of like creating mm -hmm. drums, but I always feel I like I want to pat my own back, but uh, I'll say yeah, something yeah. myself. Bring in the marching band. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> uh, shit. I'm glad that moment happened. Oh, uh, yeah. Every but, uh, but yeah, cute, cute um, people. but for the most part, it's like, a, it's a, it's like a long process just between bringing in all the different musicians and mixing and tweaking everything to get it where I want. And so do you lay down like a hook that night or a hook? Like, are you doing hook? Are, are most of your songs created from the hook first and yeah. then you plug in the... Yeah, the, the the verses and bridges and, mm -hmm. and those little yeah, peppers, yeah, you know, little pepperings, Himalayan sea salt <laughs> in there. But yeah, most most of the time I have a melody that I really like, okay. and, and that becomes the hook. And then I like to sit because I like I like the hook to be something of, like that um, has a concept that people like can relate to. And then I like the verses to relate to that hook. I don't really like miscellaneous bars or yeah. miscellaneous just hooks about like you, you'll do that every now and then like with the hot peppers right. and random stuff but i do have noticed that 
And there's if, a there's a mission there's, in your in your song. There is a mission, and but there's also there, so there's some times when I do more miscellaneous stuff, but it'll always just be like thirty two or sixty four or like forty seven and a half. Just like there's no there's no real like I just kind of go go in for a little while, you know, and just have fun with rapping because I think that there's an art to that is just being like. Just writing bars just to be funny and entertaining and come up with little witticisms and like I almost I also like really getting like raunchy in my lines too, just like shock value and I think it's I don't know, I think it's hilarious. What can a listener type in right now that will find one of those types of songs of yours? Um, so if you go on sound my SoundCloud and you look up um, it's called a project that I did called Lukey Lights and I rap over these pretty lights beats and um, pretty lights is just super dope and uh i just go in on those and i'm just i'm just having a ton of fun i actually recorded six songs over his beats on on a saturday afternoon so lukey lights lukey lights yeah i only have three of them up there but it was just kind of like a low-key release i was just like well that was fun i'll post that and and where are you recording yourself now like i, I want to know like for the <clears throat> the most of the time where, where most of your recording is done just all my recording happens in my living room which is um in brewery town in philadelphia just moved down there um, with Bay, like in November. Shout out, Cat. Shout out Bay. That's the what real up, one. Lady? What up, lady? She an Uber driver. Look her up. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo. <laughs> Request Cat her. Cat does Uber. D U Z Uber. Uh, <laughs> so, so what, what what tools are you using? You, um, I use a um, a Rode NT One A. That's my microphone. I use Logic. That's my. Um, uh, Recording interface. Is, it, is that software. ripped or do you buy that? I bought it. Bought purchased it. it. Boom. Good karma. Yeah. Awesome. And you're self recording. You're just self banging this out. You, you're self. not waiting for like a bunch of pros to come in. You figured it out. You figured you're, it out. And it and you're it, building it from the inside I out. Build it all from the inside out. And it, it's made it like more. Uh, I think the first project that I put out that was self produced. When I listen to it now, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, like that's funny. It's <laughs> yeah. cute, cute. Job. But it's cool because I can compare it to my current stuff and see the progression, and it makes me think, oh wow, look at that progression in a year and a half. Where will it be in five years? Yeah. Where will it be in even just? Yeah, if you six if you don't look back at early stuff and wince at what happened, you're you, you started way too late. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. like you, you you should look back and feel raw. I'm like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. and kind of be embarrassed at it and. And honestly, it, like I, I've heard this multiple times, but they, they do say if 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 you start when you're a hundred percent ready, when everything's a go, you're starting you're starting too late. Yeah, you're, hmm. I like that. I like that. Yeah, thought. you you have to like hit those bumps and learn along the way. Yeah, and learning to to mix my own songs and to record them and uh, has been such a pleasant experience. I feel like I listen to songs differently, differently now, knowing how to EQ a kick drum or knowing how to. Um, just how to record a guitar and put re I don't know just like all those things that come along with, yeah. with mixing them. It's probably making the writing process easier and better for you. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, it's like uh, building a car, right? I don't know if this has anything to do with songwriting, but let's say if you don't know how to drive a car, right? If you never know how to drive a car. It, building of the car probably doesn't make that it. much sense, right. you know. I like that analogy. You know, time. like what is this even going to? Did you, you come know? up with that now? I did. That I'm was incredible. Big. They called me. They used to call me Meta Metaphor Marvin. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I, back I, in the sixth grade. Yeah, rightfully so, dude. That's yeah. an incredible met. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. No. Um, so let's uh, let's keep this moving here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm gonna ask you something from my heart that. I might not publish or not, depending on. Actually, no. I want your truthful, honest answer. What advice would you just would you give me? What advice would I give you? What advice would you give Tom Boyder Boyd the first? <laughs> I would say to Tom Boyder Boyd the first. Be less cute. Be <laughs> <laughs> first of all, just dial down the handsomeness. <laughs> Second of all, pick one. Pick one. Pick one thing and run with it. Like, don't try to eat every piece of pie before pulling the pepperoni off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <He's mad. laughs> no, but, like, you've got a lot of facets that you're pursuing. And I feel like I could probably self-diagnose here as well. Yeah, You've got a lot Some, of things that you're pursuing. Sometimes coaching is learning. Oh, well, we all know that. Um, <laughs> 
Are but you? yeah, sometimes you can. Well, yeah, we're good. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can spread yourself thin with that, you know. Yeah. And I feel and and you I have agree. great energy, great positive energy. There goes my meter. Oh, uh, check it. Luke's girlfriend's calling. Oh, guys, <laughs> let me. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm kidding. Sarcasm. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you do have great creative energy, and you are a great um, pooler. P O O L E R. You pool resources, and you pool energy, and you pool human beings, and you're like, yo, mm-hmm. people, look at all that we have in common, and let's create this awesome thing. And you've done that with so many things, but I want Thank you, you to pick one to, to just like have. Be like three, two, one, take off, Houston. We have lift off. You know, something I, like that. I, I'll, I agree with you one hundred percent, and it, and it brings back a quote that I heard. I like quotes. My quote guy, uh, and, and uh, Will sure. Smith was saying sure. that his grandma or his grandfather taught him this, and like all summer, his grandma used to like or, or grandfather. Well, I forget which one it was in the story, but was said, "Will, I want you to build build a wall out back," and he was like, "How am I going to build a huge forty foot wall?" And he, he said. One brick at a time. Mm-hmm. Place one brick. Focus on that one brick. And then eventually, after you place those bricks, then you get the full wall. But don't put a brick in random places all over, all right, over the right. place. And, and then you'll, have, you'll just have a scattered group of, of nothing with no purpose, right. which is kind of um, where my heart has felt at certain times. I feel like I got a backyard full of bricks, and, mm-hmm. and you're right. I think I can do better at, at focusing that, on that one specific wall but you know what i just realized too asking for honest advice like even if it's negative what you just did you complimented me like eight times so you could give me that one piece of negative yeah. advice that could be a good lesson just for life for anyone <laughs> listening like hey if you want if you want to confront someone about it, yeah how shitty of a person they are yeah just compliment them a lot <laughs> well no 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 not that and not that not that but getting negative feedback usually comes with a lot of positives Mm -hmm. you know that there's a lesson there but they they'll also remind you of of some of the good things that you got going on right all right we're gonna wrap this bad boy up and and i do appreciate your time is this like the anticipated time that you had or or no yeah going definitely longer yeah that's right um uh we're gonna wrap this up for real let's do some let's do some rap rap all right so you got something new coming out i do what is it it's called jack of all it's a mixtape i'm calling it um and it is inspired by Aziz Ansari's original Netflix series called Master of None. I had some of the songs already written and then I and recorded, and then I watched the series and I was like, this is like exactly where I am in life. Yes. I'm in my late 20s, I'm living in a city, I've got relationships with friends, family, you know, and, and I'm pursuing a career and I'm also pursuing a passion and I just related to the character and I was like, I'm gonna take quotes from there, I'm gonna interweave them through the mixtape and I'm gonna make like the, the songs kind of relate to the different episodes which uh-huh. touch on a lot of awesome social issues. So that's Jack of All, it comes out February 19th. Jack of All, and so your overall message would be, what's the tagline? Um, <clears throat> well, I think it's like- Did you just say it? Uh, well. The tagline is, um, all we can do are the things that we love. A jack of all trades. A master like of none. I like that. Um, all right. And uh, where can we go to find your stuff? Let's, let's drop this on people. LukeO'BrienMusic.com. Everything, you know, if you go there, you can find all the tabs that, that you need. I think we keep it simple. Keep it in one place. LukeO'BrienMusic.com. All right, and I, I'm gonna give two bonus questions because you gotta go get to your meter, okay. and 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 I I, I want to really make it a close call for you to go get that to see this. I think that's ideal. Car. Okay, cool. If there was one person you could shoot a documentary about, but they're not famous, who would it be? Um, anyone, not famous though. Um, Tom Boyd or Boyd, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right, thank you, Luke. Oh, thank you. I love you, man. I love you too, dog. Keep dominating life. Thank you, man. You're gonna make me cry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Get to your meter. Yeah, yeah, let me do that. Peace, brother.
That was my buddy Luke. Go listen to his stuff and follow him on his journey at LukeO'BrienMusic.com. And since recording that podcast, there have been many sweet developments in Luke's career that I can't fully disclose. But he's definitely someone worth paying attention to. And anyone who is making something this week, hit me on Twitter, at BoyderYo, and tell me what the mission is. If it's a dresser, a card for Bay, a banging almond butter smoothie, I do not care. I just want to see it. Send your pics or thoughts, and I'll respond at Boyder. Yo on Twitter, Boyder Yo. Have a beautiful day and do you love.